now chat you can now pin a message in the top of your live chat for viewers to read click any message to get pin oh how cool is that got it nobody needed to see that up close right good morning everybody or good afternoon if you're in a place where it's the afternoon because it's the afternoon here me and Mr. Sleepyhead had a late start to our day. So this live coffee chat is not from the craft room. It is from the chair. <laughs> and uh, are you seeing me okay? Yeah. Okay. It is from the chair. And um, it is with coffee, though. So there is that. Take the first sip with me. And I have to take my meds, too. So maybe we'll take meds with coffee. Oh, this morning I'm having coffee. <laughs> mm. Jim and I have been out of coffee creamer for a while. Um, just, just by sheer happenstance. Good morning, everybody. Um, but we've been trying to use the all of the syrups we have with the half and half we have, so... I like it. It's been working out pretty good, huh, right, Jim? Yeah. Jim, can you sit on this side with me? Jim's sitting on the other side of the bed instead of coming near me. Well, I, I need to take my meds, and I realize that they're at, yeah, I'll do them later. No, I got to do them now. Can you come get my meds? I got their I'm sorry. So I was just talking to Roxanne. So I talked about Roxanne before. Roxanne is a friend who I met here on YouTube who also has cancer or had cancer in Roxanne's case. Um, she is currently NED, and I love that about um, I love that for her. I love that about her. Um, just that the other day when I was traveling, um, I took my Sunday morning meds on Monday. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, you got one? Okay, I was going to move the water over there. That's fine, though. You're okay. Jim came to sit next to me. Um, thank you. So for Sunday morning, I got to take Monday morning's meds, which they're the same. My, I take daily meds. I don't have, Jim has a, a medication he only takes on Monday. Um, so that would be different, but I don't have anything like that. So I can swap them out. Jay Rockefeller, good afternoon. Hello. I said good morning. Um, and good afternoon to those of you who's the afternoon. Yeah, Mike. Um, well, because it's in the West Coast, it's still morning, so I had to say both. And then people watch this another time, and they'll see both. Just chew my calcium, you guys. Chew your calcium; it's good for your bones. Um, I just scrape all the sugar off of it first with my tongue. <laughs> oh. Huh? Well, I have, I'm out of the pill calcium, but before I replaced it, I wanted to make sure I ate all this calcium. Because um, I didn't want it going to waste. So anyway, this morning's coffee is brought to you by Mocha. Yeah. Mocha and heavy cream. Skinny girl Mocha. So... It turns out... Ordering stuff online is not always the greatest, and especially if you don't not a returner. But I bought um, from Bath and Body Work, Bed and Bed Bath and Beyond. I always do that. I'm sorry. I bought a pack of Skinny Girl syrups. They're just the small bottles. I think they're like 16 ounces or 20. Um, actually, they might be 24 ounces because they're kind of bigger than I'm, I'm imagining. And it was supposed to be vanilla, salted caramel, and mocha. But when I got it delivered to my house, it was vanilla, mocha, and mocha. <laughs> like somebody had swapped out the sugar-free caramel, which um, which is funny because I actually was going to gift that to my sister, the salted caramel. Um, I knew there was a chance that I might go to Vegas. Um, what I ended up bringing her was the coffee javi, the, the decaf javi, and I ended up bringing her um, a mocha syrup. And I told her, I was like, Coffee here, so you put that so you can put that there. Is that better? Okay. Um, coffee, like when I was doing sugar, 
my favorite thing to get was to go to Starbucks and either get a mocha frappuccino with caramel drizzle or a caramel frappuccino with mocha drizzle is a little bit better. Um, or the same thing from McDonald's. But of course, then, you know, diabetes hit and none of that happened anymore. Um, but uh, I will tell you, I started to tell you in a vlog that I haven't shared yet about a coffee shop called The Human Bean in Las Vegas. And um, they have a bunch of different sugar-free syrups to choose from. So they have a sugar-free peppermint, which I was so excited. I was able to actually have like a peppermint coffee in the summer, in the winter time, at Christmas time, and have it be sugar free, which was very exciting. So I see a lot of messages, but I'm not getting anything from Jim. So I don't know. He forgets he's supposed to read everything to me because I can't read anything. Um, let's see where else, where else I lay off. Uh, Jay Rockefellers. CC says, "I love you guys so much." Love you too, CC. Margaret just came on and said, "Good morning, Joanne." Good Goodbye. morning to you. To be here with you. I missed you. Another person in California. I wish I could have visited when I was in Vegas. But um Margaret's in California? I thought she was on the East Coast. Nope. Um the <sighs> this trip that I took my soul needed it. My body, not so much. Um, I was so grateful to do all the things that I was able to do. And I was cursing the things that I couldn't. But I made sure I got all of the wonderful bonding experiences out of it that I could. Um, I will trip back there again. I will venture back there again when I'm better. More better, more better. Um, I definitely want to not have the walker. Excuse me. I would like to have the walker if I need it, not because I have to have it. If that makes any sense, like, oh, I'm tired today, so let me grab the walker to help me with my stability. Not Jerry. You have to have the walker every time you get out of the car, because that's a pain in the booty. I thought the wheelchair was a pain in the booty enough, but so it turns out on my trip. I took my my took my um, wheelchair because I um I know that I can push myself in the wheelchair if I need to. If there's nobody there who's strong enough to push me, I can push myself. Just people have to have patience with me, and we have to have more time allotted for the event. But nobody could put my wheelchair in and out of the car. That was the problem. I could pull my wheelchair out of the car. It's getting it back in that I have a problem. So. I ended up not even be able, not even, not even being able to use my wheelchair. Now, the one exception was um, when we went to see David Copperfield. Um, my my niece and my sister were, or Lisa and my niece, maybe, were able to get the wheelchair back in um, the car. That's probably when my sister said, "Ah, oh, we can't do that anymore." <laughs> So, sorry, Julie. <laughs> um, and Lou, thank you. Uh, I just had such a great time. I was just telling um, my friend that I hadn't seen my sister's middle child in over 10 years. And they've gone through a lot in 10 years. Um, and I did um, apologize because... My brain <laughs> doesn't work the way I want it to. And I know this is becoming an excuse that people don't want to hear. But it's the god-awful truth. And when I just got off the phone with my friend who had cancer just recently, um, and she also says the same thing, that you just your brain doesn't work and people don't get it. I was telling her stories, and she's like, preach to the choir. You're preaching to the choir. And I was like, I know, I know. I just nobody else gets it. So it's frustrating enough for me to not think of the right words. My brain was my gift. I was gifted with a very exceptional brain. <clears throat> Sorry I'm doing that. It's, I just realized I was doing it on camera, so I apologize to everybody. I forgot to take my nose spray before bed last night, and everything's just stuck right there. 
So I'm trying to just move it back and forth so I can breathe. So I do apologize. It's just not going to blow out of it in a tissue. It's just, it's stuck. So I'm just trying to do that to get it to move around a little bit. So I apologize if that's disturbing to people. Um, anyway, the, um, the not being able to brain is very frustrating to me. But this trip especially made me realize how frustrating it is to the people around me. Um, when Chris I say the wrong... Who? Chris M. Oh, hi, Chris. Chris M is the one who lives really close. She was like around Union Sinclair. Like... Oh, okay. Um, the um, It's very frustrating for the people around me because when I say the wrong words, even I even though I preface by saying... I don't remember the right words. It'll sometimes like blow back and be like, well, you told me it was the left. And I was like, yeah, but I was trying to, I was pointing, I was pointing right when I was trying to remember the word I was saying left, but I was pointing right. Like my brain just didn't brain it right. And I just use it as an example. It's not about direction. It's more like more complex things, but you're like, you know, um, are you hungry? And I'll say no but I really am, but I just said the wrong thing. And then I'll say, I'll have, uh, I'll say no, and then I'll say, I'll have something. And they're like, you just told me no. And they get frustrated with me, but I can tell like, oh my God, is it frustrating for me, myself already? Like you getting frustrated with me sucks, but trust me, I'm frustrated without you getting frustrated at me. Like it's bad. Um, Mayor Long says, are you guys ready for Christmas? almost we were decorating yesterday we got i'm gonna wait to put the tree up um lisa's two oldest grandkids are coming and uh they they i think they're gonna help decorate the tree tomorrow so we'll put the tree up tonight but we have almost the rest of the house done a couple of few things like putting out the mrs santa claus she's kind of bulky and can get in the way when um when uh we're still decorating so she's probably usually one of the last things to come out. And and we're still like, we have all of the mantle decor, but we haven't put it up all where it's Organize going. It, it. What? Organize it. Organize it or decorate with it. Like I have the stuff on there. We had a vision of like a snowman wonderland. But we realized yesterday, Jimmy had brought in the boxes that he thought, um, I had purged a couple of good sized boxes of stuff and he thought he pulled in the seven boxes or nine boxes that had all the Christmas stuff in it, but I'm missing a bunch of stuff. So I'm guessing that there's at least still one box out there. I was like, uh, where are the stockings? Now I'm not upset if anything got thrown out or if anything's missing, it will be disappointing to know that it doesn't exist in my realm anymore, but I understand. However, as you guys remember, we didn't take the tree down until June. Yeah. Um, because I was I was sick and um, my rash was preventing me from doing any of that. So the things that Jim was able to put away between January and June um, may have gotten put into like a random box that they didn't belong in, which I'm not mad at. It's just a matter of finding them now. That's all. And if they got thrown away well good they'll just buy new stockings and write new names on them that's really all i can do um mary long says are you going to show us your holiday decor that you put up this year yes ma'am we're going to do a tour oh i forgot i had a clip <laughs> i'm sorry go ahead and then um uh, uh, jay rockefeller um, so Jan, how is your rack? How is your rack? Awful. So yes, I am gonna share. Uh, we're gonna do a um, like a little maybe live stream next week. Um, actually, that'll be after Christmas, but maybe. Um, but hopefully before. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to do a little videotaping um, as we put up the tree and stuff. Uh, my rashes are terrible. They continued to get worse. Now, I say rashes, but at this point, they're kind of like wounds. Um, 
they are not great. Uh, I have a, a follow up with the dermatologist on the 19th. She, which is tomorrow, <laughs> she's going to uh, biopsy. Um, uh, she wants to do a new biopsy on them. And she's going to take a look at them, uh, the dermatologist. And we'll see how that goes. We'll see what um, is said about that, if the treatment will change or her care plan or any of that stuff. So actually, as a matter of fact, that's tomorrow morning early. So we have to, we slept in again today. And I say we, but really it's my husband. <laughs> I was up until 830. And I said to him, I said, uh, he was going to set the alarm for 930 so we can get an early start this morning. And when I was falling asleep at 8.30, I said, just wake me up because I will probably sleep through the alarm. And he said, well, I'll reset it for 10 so that you can sleep a little longer. And he ended up at, you know, oh, 10 to 11. <laughs> it was like, um, it's time to get up. Uh, I'm still recovering from my travels. Um, I have... Lots of doctor's appointments this week because it's my first week back. Um, and I, uh, excuse me. Oh, hold on. My moderator is being attacked. Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me. Oh my God. She's so cute. I can't take it. She's petting herself on your eyebrows. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Hi. Why don't you actually pet her with your hands and maybe she'll stop rubbing on your face? <laughs> uh, you use a motorboat, not. <laughs> Hi. Oh, so seepies. You got fur in your eyes? No. More like cat whiskers. Cat whiskers in your eyes. How cute. If pe people are probably putting comments all up and neither one of us can see them. So. Oh my gosh, her ears are back. Like, who told you you could stop petting me? Okay. There you go. No digging in? Yeah. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> that is so how Lisa holds her. It's best. Now squish her face into your face. Yeah, it's like that. That's what mama does. Today's live stream is brought to you by Jim and Baby. No digging in. No digging in. <laughs> Did you just hit her with all of them? <laughs> you got booped with Milnir? Did you boop the flu with the Milnir? Mm -hmm. I hope you guys are enjoying the show. Can you see yourself in there? Are you lined up okay? Yeah. Okay. In the meantime, the whole time, you could have had your head cut off. I can't see. I don't know. I don't um, know. Let's see what we got here. A lot of people saying, oh, my gosh, is she beautiful. She's such uh, a pretty cat. Yeah, Mary Long, Mary Long says, cute. <laughs> my cat is the same way whenever I'm doing something <laughs> She always has to have the attention. Always. In the meantime, when you need the attention, when you need the cat to come on and love on you, she's like, nope, sorry, it's not your turn. Not your day. So, to go back and answer um, about, about my rashes. I'm not sure I understand. The one on the left that used to be Africa started off 
before I, when I started chemotherapy again, it was just a small patch about that big of the, the raw skin. And the one on the right was about this big of raw skin. Now they're both deeper. As a matter of fact, they both look like somebody dug out um, holes in my skin. Kind of like when my Sheila, leg wound, who? Sheila. Oh, hi, Sheila. When my leg wounds opened up, do you guys remember when my the chemotherapy was eating my scars on my leg wounds? It's kind of like that. And it's very painful. Very painful. Um, but all the things that happened, all the things that, all the pain that I was in on my trip, all of the exhaustion, all of the exhaustion, missing you guys because I couldn't even pick up the camera and open my eyes and blog. I saved every bit of energy to do stuff with my family. My sister and my niece, they decorated the house so I can finally, I've never seen my sister's house decorated for Christmas. I've never been to my sister's for Christmas, just Thanksgiving and Easter and other times, but like the, as far as holidays are concerned, I was always home for Christmas. So I never actually got to see her house decorated. So my niece and my sister, they decorated like their whole house for Christmas. I got to see my brother-in-law did the outside and it just looks amazing. Um, my sister got this thing on Groupon, which is like an archway made out of presents. It is the cutest inflatable I've ever seen. And I want one so bad. So I've been looking every day. I'm like, present archway, inflatable. <laughs> um, but I wouldn't trade any of it. I wouldn't trade the edema. I wouldn't trade the cold sore situation that's happening because I got basically dehydrated more in, in Las Vegas than I couldn't drink enough water. Let's just put it that way. And my sister cooks with practically no salt. So it wasn't even about salty items. It was just literally about the dry atmosphere. You know, here I sleep in a uh, not dry atmosphere and I sleep with the water, the water uh, humidifier every day. So can you imagine what it was like there? Um, but I don't care. I don't care if I have to recover for another two weeks. It was worth it. It was. Not only the views and the ride and the time with Lisa, just us and all of the crazy stuff like the orange uh, lens cloth and you know, uh, life-saving body pillows and all of these things. I wouldn't trade any of those experiences for anything, for anything. Jan, too. Oh, hi, Jan. Um, so I, like I said, I don't care if it takes me another month to recover. It's, it'll be, it'll been worth it. Um, because when you have time left, What's the point of having, you know, it, I feel like it's that there was a movie with Justin Timberlake and it wasn't great, but it was like time was the, um, oh. right, somebody help me with that word. Um, currency, time was the currency. And what's the point of having time if you don't do anything with it? You know, how many games of solitaire can you play? How many times can you watch a movie over and over again? Doing stuff and traveling and being like experiences. That's what it's really all about. And I am not complaining at all. This is not a complaint. But like financially, it set me back. Uh, time, health wise, it didn't really set me back health wise because I had stopped the treatment. So that, that was really, but like recovery time, I guess, energy wise, it set me back, like using up all the extra energy, using up all the extra money, oh. but it, I wouldn't trade it for wor the world. And now I just have to be like more conservative with things for a while until I get back to the point where we can afford to travel again. And, um, a big part of going out there was to try to find a, what, um, Sorry, I, I didn't realize what was going on until a second ago. Um, because Sheila Hall asked Margaret about her wedding and um Margaret said that they just finalized preparations. That's exciting. So it's like, oh, she must be getting married like Soon. Right before the new year, right after Christmas. No, I 
No, I think it's maybe. Uh, why do I feel like Margaret? When is your when is your expected wedding date, or when is your wedding date planned for? I don't want to put wrong words out there to like jinx it or anything. So I just was when are you when is your wedding scheduled for? I guess is what I was trying to say. I felt like it was Christmas Day. Yeah, that's what I thought. I was gonna okay. say. Wow. That she's just getting married that. next week. Yeah, I, I didn't ask. So. No, that's okay. I expect that that's going to be beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Christmas wedding. Yeah. Well, my cousin, not my cousin, my friend Colleen got married a couple of days after, actually a week after Christmas, but. She gave Christmas ornaments as her favors, and it was such an inexpensive way to go, but I still have it. Um, it was back in the time where you can get, like, the ribbons with your little name printed on it and say, like, the date. and the. So she just got all of those, like, satin-wrapped foam ornaments that were very popular uh, two decades ago, three decades ago. And she put her, tied her little ribbon and a little bit of pearl jewels on there, and that was her favors and they were so popular. And like I said, I still have mine. Um, anyhow, uh, I think that we're all going to be with you that day, ma'am, because, um, it's, it's, we're never going to forget, you know, it's one of those things like I'm going to forget because my brain just forgot now, but I wanted to look, I wanted to say it was on Christmas, but I didn't, I don't know if you could tell the look on my face, but I was like, I don't want to say the wrong thing, but I think she'd get married on Christmas. Um, ow. Ow. Right. Blessed hell. I think the bandage on the right moved. Sorry. I picked my arms up and that's all it took. Um, she would want to know if we got her tree up yet because she came in late. Oh, not yet, Sheila. So last night we decorated... Most of what we have to decorate. Um, we did opt to not decorate, fully decorate the bathroom and fully decorate the kitchen. Like we opted to do just minimal things because of both of our, like Jim's doing all the work. So um, it's a lot harder on him than it has, ever has been in the past. And I know some people don't ever get to see me work. Like all those years that I've unpacked all the Christmas stuff and we've decorated you guys didn't get to see me pushing all the boxes in or taking the boxes out of the attic and walking them into the house. Like we each had a pretty good, decent job when it came to decorating. We each had a physical, we both had a little bit of a physical thing that we did. Um, that being said, you guys didn't, uh, Jim's got to do it all by himself right now. Um, but I did purge two boxes worth of stuff. Yep. Um, so far. And we all still have uh, five or six boxes to go through. Um, but there's also some things that are like missing MIA. So we're going to hopefully get the rest of the boxes in today so I can go through them. And Lisa's coming tonight with her two oldest grandchildren. And we're going to try to get the tree up tonight and then they can help tomorrow with the decorations. <laughs> Sorry. It's like, you know what? We have squirrel moments. The, the cat, the one cat baby's uh, Daisy walked across the floor and baby heard her and like spun her head around like what is going on you might be missing something ma'am you should go check it out no all right uh, Margaret says that you were correct and Sheila says that uh she cut back on decorations this year too well honestly I you know we try to pick a theme uh, Jimmy still wants to have a gnome tree, so we'll have like a woodland uh, gnome tree again, uh, sort of a Nordic woodland, right? That's what yeah. you want to do. Um, but as far as the mantle is concerned, this year I decided to make it like a snowman's wonderland. Um, so we have like a lot of the decor out. We just have to put it up. Um, and then as far as the kitchen's concerned, I don't think we're taking out any of our good cookware, the cardinal cookware. I think we're just going to um, put out the dish towels and um, I'll do the two tier tray um, at the bar cart or the bar cart. The coffee bar. Thank you. Thank you. Um, oh my gosh, that was another thing that frustrated people with my memory. Is that in the past, I've always been able to properly finish people's sentences. 
I can't do that anymore. I'm nowhere near what they were thinking. It's bad. You were saying, honey? No. I'm sorry. Oh, nobody has anything else? Okay. Um, so, <coughs> I want to say, obviously, we didn't get to do any crafts for Christmas, but never say never. I never say never. Um, you know, the grandkids will be here soon, so maybe they'll want to do something with me. Margaret asks, is there a special menu for Christmas? It's always pink ham. I would love wedding venue ha food. What are we having at the wedding? No, I'm kidding. Um, um, we usually have pink ham at Christmas. Macaroni and cheese. Gluten-free, of course. Um... We always do like a breakfast, a big breakfast, but it's become a medium breakfast. Pierogies, kielbasa, scrambled eggs, bacon, and a couple of like microwave sausages. Lots of protein. <laughs> Lots of protein. We might do biscuits, but I, I came home from my trip and I found moldy biscuits in a Ziploc bag. And I don't know I'm going to be making biscuits anytime soon. Because I was like, they forget about the leftovers. I'm not mad at it. I just was like literally being pregnant. Preg practical yeah. about it oh, I, I i always used to see the small can of biscuits and say who would make a small can of biscuits and uh, you know a family of three where a person doesn't eat gluten so family of two um um chris asks you know if you will be starting chemo after the new year i'm gonna not gonna start chemo again until my back is completely healed this time um starting it while the rashes weren't completely healed was the way I wanted to go and I wanted to start fighting the cancer again but I have to fix this skin condition I have to heal I have to heal my back um yeah, once like that's good morning. good morning good afternoon yeah once that is better then we're gonna go full force in we may even uh, do another a different type of immunotherapy, but we haven't decided that yet. Um, because the chemotherapy that three months I was doing it worked really well at reducing the sizes of tumors and the amounts of tumors and making some tumors completely disappear. Um, when I was on my the road home, the last three or four days I was there plus the travel time. I started to have really severe lower back aches and they weren't constant pain medication did help most of the time. If I turned the wrong way or turned a certain way, you know, like it would be aggravated and irritated. And if we hit bumps in the road was the absolute worst. Um, but obviously nothing anybody can do about that except for road workers. <laughs> um, but I called the spine surgeon and to make an appointment and that one day of resting in my own bed was like a world of difference. So I told them what I had been doing, uh, what had been happening. And she said, well, if it starts to flare up again, we definitely want to see you. So Chris goes to say, um, we usually have open house type thing on. I would Christmas love that. Eve with lots of finger food and drinks. Christmas Day, we just do family. I love that, Chris. My cousin used to do that. That was amazing. I miss that sense of like party time. Yeah. Um, and then she goes on to say, Good for you. I was thinking that would not be a good idea. Oh, to go on the road trip? Yeah. Um, let's see here. Well, yeah, so it was definitely, I'm sorry, just to answer Chris real quick, just yeah. hold your finger where you're at. Mm -hmm. Um, I mentioned this a few minutes ago, but I knew that it was going to be trying, but I also knew that I needed to do it. Um, the fact that my sister left so abruptly and wasn't able to return, just a lot of things, um, I didn't really get to say thank you to her properly in person. Um. 
sorry. Um, sorry, Jim. Um, so that was one thing I told her when I was there. I said I didn't really get to thank you enough for being with me last year and coming out and taking care of me and reminding me of what all I have left to live for. If that makes any sense. So I thank her a lot for that. So it was important that I did go out and I got to see my family, spend time with young women, which was great. It's so energizing to spend time with young women and to watch these women turn. They are such caretakers. Um, they were so also caring and, and giving of themselves. So it was very, it was very great to see. So go ahead, Jim, go ahead. Uh, Jane says. Who? Jan? Jan. It's okay. She won't think Jan. It's okay. I just want to make sure um, Jane was near. Jan says, <laughs> uh, you don't have to answer this, but wondering if the doctor has considered sending you to a wound specialist. You have suffered with those wounds for so long. That is what I talked to the dermatologist about, and she wants to do a biopsy to decide. Uh, she wants to see them in person. I sent her pictures. And she wants to see them in person to do a biopsy to make sure we're still going on the same course of treatment or to see them in person and to decide if that's what we need to do. But definitely that was one of the things that I reached out to my doctor, my team, I'll say my team. I reached out to my team of doctors to, I sent them all the pictures of what the back has got to look like. And in fact, as a matter of fact, my poor oncologist, I hadn't labeled, he's the one I sent pictures to first and I hadn't labeled before and after. So he thought that at the pick them out with the deep wounds he saw that that was the before pictures um but then i had to go and reiterate and i was like no 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 this is what it looked like so for everybody else i, I dated them <laughs> i was like this is what it looked like in august and this is what it looks like today um so his uh, nurse practitioner said that uh if the dermatologist feels that i need wound care then definitely but she recommends I see the dermatologist first since it's a skin condition and since the dermatologist was treating this skin condition. Um, so, so I have an appointment with her tomorrow. Um, but that's okay. Ask away. I will tell you, I, I really don't try to keep anything from you guys. Uh, some things aren't mine to share. Like if Jimmy's having issues or whatever, and I'll leave it up to him to tell you. Or if he gives me permission to tell you. Same thing with Lisa. Same thing with my mother-in-law. But I don't care. I'll tell you whatever. I mean, as you know, I'll tell you everybody, every store and every score. So, um, sorry, that's from Juno. <laughs> um, Kristen goes to say, uh, no starting the chemo back up. Not a good idea. Mm. We, um, road trip, great idea. Um, Oh, that's what you meant. <laughs> Sorry. I got it now. Took me a few minutes of processing the lousy brain systems. They don't work coherently anymore. Uh, Congruently? No. Say, cooperatively. Margaret goes to say you have lots of good for never lose hope. Oh, yeah. But I have to tell you the truth. When I first got hurt, I was in such pain, and I know that it didn't come across on the camera necessarily because, I don't know, I guess it didn't. It, I, I didn't want it to, honestly. Um, but it, I was in such pain that I was like, oh, my gosh, nobody, no, I can't do anything but lay here like a lump, and I can't even lay here like a lump, and then when I have to pee, what the freak am I going to do? So. Um, and then, of course, Margaret, or not Margaret, excuse me, Grandma G goes to say, I agree, Chris. Life is for living. Uh, got to do, do what you can when you can. Exactly, exactly. I um. Jimmy had his live stream last night, and uh, a mutual friend of me uh, jumped on under a different screen name, and uh, was questioning how could I go, and I'm like, how could you not go? Especially since um. Shh, don't tell my sister. But my niece actually offered to pay halfway. Well, she offered to pay for the whole trip, but um, that was when I was going to fly. 
Um, but then she said she would offer to pay for halfway. And I was like, I love that about you, but you don't have to do that. <laughs> so instead she took us out for dumplings. Um, we went to a dumpling house, which I will share the pictures when I share Well, I did. No, that was just the road trip there. The video that I'm editing currently. There's a lot to goes into editing. I'm just saying. I know that it looks easy. And I talk about doing YouTube as the physically less less challenging physically uh, job that I can have. But oh my gosh, so much goes into editing, especially when you're doing like these putting together videos and photos and editing the sounds and voicing over. Are you going to pick music? Are you going to do? There's a lot. And my brain isn't braining properly. And I'm still exhausted. But it's all worth it. That's what I was saying before. All worth it. Um, I am getting a bestie text. Let's see what it says. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Bestie text. Bestie text says, hello, how long you sleeping? Oh, I didn't even know she me before to say I wasn't sleeping. Do you have your phone there so I can text her back? No? Okay, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll text her back. Oh, I can't do it on there because it'll cut me off on there. Bless that. Yeah. Um, but we're almost over, right? 